So now that we can look at our notes, it'd be really nice if our new note button worked and add a new note. We can go back to our code and let's duplicate our show page and rename it to new. We can add a new here. Now to create a new note, we'll define some default state when the component loads. So we create an empty note here. Now we can extract out note from the state and replace this code. We'll give our div a class, give it a nice title, new note. Now we can add a form tag. And we'll need to add two fields to our form, a title and a text area for the body. So we'll add the title first, we'll wrap this in a div, give it a label. And we can add a input, which will be of type text. Its name will be title, and its value will extract from the notes title. Now to update our notes title, we'll need to use the onChange prop, and we'll give it a function called this update value. Now we don't have an update value function yet, so we can define it up here. We need to use the fat arrow syntax here so we can bind the function call to our component. We will see use an event, and inside of there, we will extract our note from the state. And we'll do use a little bit of ES6 magic to update our notes value using the value that the input gave to us. So we can call this.setState. We can set the note and we'll destructure the note. So we'll get the note's current content as a new object. And then we will we'll get the name of the element that triggered this update value call. And then we'll get the value from that element. So we have to make sure in this instance that we name our inputs title or body. Otherwise, um, we'll add extra values into our notes that won't be of any use to us elsewhere in the app. And then we need to add our text area. We'll name that body. We'll get the value from note.body. And once again, we'll call onChange with update value. Now all we need to do is add a submit button and we should be done. We'll also add a link component to cancel out of creating a new note. So you need to remember to import link from React Router DOM. Now, right now, if we click save, nothing will happen. The form doesn't know how to handle submitting changes. So we need to add an on submit. And for this, we'll call a function called handle save. Now we can implement that up here. Now, if you're familiar with implementing submit handlers for forms in standard HTML, you'll know that by default, the form will trigger a page refresh. And to get around that, we need to call prevent default from the onSubmit event. This will prevent the form from refreshing the page and stopping us from updating our values. Now, how are we going to save our data? Since our data is stored within our app.js, the new note page has no uh, direct access to any of that data stored higher up in the hierarchy. But to get around this, we will expect our app to send us a prop called onSave. And that prop will be a function which our app component will implement and we'll just call with our notes data. So we can do that by just saying this. Props on save, and we'll pass in our notes state. And upon save, we will return the ID of this new note. Using that ID, 
we can redirect to our show page automatically by leveraging the props that React Router will give to us when we add this page to our app's hierarchy. And that prop is the history. And this object will allow us to directly update the URL within our app. So we can call history.replace. This will replace the current URL with forward slash notes and the ID that we've been given. And that's what we need to do to create a new node. So we can implement this by going back to our app. We can import our new note page. We can add a new route. And once again, we'll give the component a function. And we need to give our new page component an onSave prop. And we'll call that handle save. Now we just need to implement handle save, which will receive a note object. Now we need to give our note an ID. So for now, we'll get the values of our notes IDs as an array and then increment the highest number. So to do that, we'll define IDs and we'll extract that with object.keys on this state notes. And then our ID will be math max. We will destructure our IDs array into a set of arguments for the math max to, to accept. And then we'll add one. Now our note, we can give the ID to the note itself. And much like we did with our update value function, we will destructure our notes and then add the new one to the end as a new object. If we were to simply add a new item to the existing notes object, it won't classify as a new update and React may not re-render our view hierarchy. So instead we have to do set state, give it notes. We will destructure the notes that we've already have. So this will create a new object with the contents of our current notes object. And then we'll add a new one with an ID and note value. And now we just have to return a new ID and that's saving to our local data store. So if we go back to our browser and we click on new note, this takes us to our new note form. We can give it a title and we can save it. And just as expected, it takes us to note ID three, gives us the content. And we're done. We go back to our notes, it shows up in the note list, and we could create a new note if we wanted to. And we could go on forever creating new notes. But the downside with this is that we are only storing our notes as a local object, and we're not persisting the data anywhere. So if I were to reload the page, all of our new notes are now gone. And this is where we need to add a persistence layer to store our notes between page refreshes. And to do that, we'll use PouchDB, which internally leverages data persistence APIs built into modern web browsers.